In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the standard normal table. We use the standard normal table to help us solve probability questions when our data values of interest aren't exactly one, two, or three standard deviations from the mean. Let's pick up where we left off in the lesson. What percent of U.S. women have pulse rates less than 80 beats per minute? Now this is working off of a problem we were doing where the mean was 74 beats per minute and the standard deviation was 11.3 beats per minute. So what I did here was I took a moment in the red here to just quickly uh, recompute the z-score we were working with. Um, 80 beats per minute is about half a standard deviation away from the mean of 74 beats per minute. So I say half because I see 0 0.53. So now we can relabel 80 as zero point five three and that's a z here z equals zero point five three so we're kind of taking here the data here of beats per minute and sort of transforming it into a value that is free of units i might say it's unitless so that we can then use this standard normal table to find these probabilities for us. If I were to convert the, the 74 to a z-score, that would be a z equal to zero. There we are. So we can see it's halfway between basically 74 and the next standard deviation, the next tick mark, which would be about 85.3 there. So it's halfway between those two. So let's see how we can capture that with the normal tables. So here are the normal tables. This is a table that you have provided in the, the lesson. You, I would encourage you to print it out. Um, and this is how the normal table, standard normal table works. So um, we need to be able to find our z of 0 0.53. Let me rewrite that here. Our z is equal to 0. 5, 3. That's the one we just computed. So the z-scores uh, here are organized where one part of this table has positive z-scores, the other side of this table has negative z-scores. Since our data value, value fell above the mean, we have a positive z-score. And so the z-score is divided into two pieces here. Let's use the ink here. Um, the organization of this table is one such that the um, the ones place, or the and then the uh, the tenths place, the one after the decimal, they're both going to be located in a row. Okay, and the hundredths place of the z-score we can find in a column. So we kind of split this number into two pieces and then try to use this, uh, this organization to capture what we need. So we're going to go to the row 0 0.5. And that row is right, I'm just going to note right here, it's right here. I'm just going to put a red line. That's where we are. This is, so we can see that part of the number. Now the, the column we're going to look has a 3 in it. And, and be advised, it's in the hundreds place. So we're, we're actually going to grab this column. Now, if that 5 wasn't there, the 3 would look like 0.03 in here. So, so we found we were able to find our z-score in the table. And then we just continue our eyes over and see where they meet. And they seem to meet right here at 0 0.0, not 0, 0.0, sorry, 0 0.7019. And that's going to be our our probability here, which we'll work with, or basically the size of the shaded region in our model. So you can kind of see here, the legend up here says, if you're capturing numbers from this table, if you look up a Z, which we have, the, the output is going to be the area to the left, all the way to the left of what you looked up. So let's see how that fits into our picture. 
And so what I see here is that the area here in turquoise, which is going to be our answer, our, our probability, which will turn into a percent, is 0 0.7019, right there. And that, that kind of makes sense to me. If you take a peek at it, this, this turquoise region that's shaded, it, it stretches a little bit over half, right? If it were half, you would think, here's a little reference here. There's half, half to the left of that dotted line would be 0.5. And we've stretched a little bit over, specifically, enough to capture this. So if I take my probability here, my area, the probability and area are synonymous with one another, and I say 0 0.7019 and multiply it times 100%, so I can kind of speak about it in a sentence, that is 70.19. And what that tells me is that 70.19% of women will have a pulse rate less than 80 beats per minute. So this is how we can work with a normal model and be any number of standard deviations away we choose and, 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 and be able to retrieve an answer. This table is a great tool for that. Let's try another one. What is the probability that a randomly selected U.S. woman would have a pulse rate above 95? So here's our table again. Um, and one thing I do want to do here is kind of shadow the, the z-scores underneath. You know, we know what the, the ones are for the tick marks. So you can kind of see that. So this is sort of our z-axis under our beats per minute axis. So I'm going to find 95 here, and 95 appears to be yeah, about right here, let's say. And that's a 95 beats per minute. And so we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is try to figure out, you know, what is that z-score? We need that z-score to get to the table. So I'll take a moment up here and say z equals, it's kind of, 95 minus uh, 74, our mean, divided by 11.3. And that is a z-score of 1.858, etc. If you were looking at your um, calculator, we round to two decimal places because that's the best we can do with the table. So that looks like 1.86. So I'm going to come back to my table, I've got another one here so we don't have to waste time erasing, and we're going to try to find 1.86, kind of zoom out here a little bit to accomplish that. So we have our Z, let's not forget, is 1.86. So uh, let's split it up so we kind of know where we're looking. So 1.8, that's going to be this row, 1.8, and 0 0.06, or 6 in the hundreds place, it's going to be right here. So now I'm just going to cross-reference these, come down, circle, that and I'm gonna actually zoom in. I'm having a hard time seeing this. So I'm gonna zoom in on that. There we are. It's kind of nice. So they seem to meet at the value 0.9686. Okay. 0 0.9686. And I've got to keep in mind before I leave my table that this, again, can't forget that this is the area to the left of what I'm asking. The table. So it provides me with the area to the left. So when I come to label this, that area that we got is 0 0.9686. Now what we want, and I probably should have shaded this before, is we want, when it said above 95, we want the area, this turquoise area over here, the area that's kind of the opposite of what it told me. 
That's, that's our solution. That little area almost looks like a triangle, but it's not. It's got a curvy top, but that sort of region there in the tail. Now, how we determine that, because the table is a table and it's going to give us area to the left, is that we are going to take one, the entire area under the normal model, and we're going to subtract off what the table told us. And what that gives us is the complement, the opposite, if you think about back in our probability modules. And so that gives me 0 0.9. I have to actually put that in my calculator to be careful today that I don't type in the wrong answer. Zero point zero three one four. So that is the area here. I don't really have room to pencil that in on top. Zero point zero three one four. Now, if you add these two together up there, the two four, four decimal values, they they will add. If I put the right number, they will add to one. So this is the area to the right, which is what we want to know. That's a very small portion of the curve, which makes sense that from a probability standpoint, I'm going to kind of write this super fancy. that it's a very small fraction of that. So if I take that number and I multiply it times 100%, I get 3.14%. So there is a 3.14% chance that a woman will have a pulse rate above 95%. So it's just a, a little bit of a different phrasing. The difference between what percentage versus I'm calling it a probability, the 3.14% chance. Answering the same question, it just depends on how we want to, to state that at the end. So I'm going to uh, come back in just a minute with an additional video, and I'm going to show you how to use the, the normal table in, it, in, its, in its last variation of how we'll work with it.